Good morning. morning. And a good morning it is. These uh, four young men are prepared and ready to take their confirmation vows. What a very special day for family, for friends, and for Good Shepherd congregation. It's been my privilege as a pastor serving here these last five months uh, to bring this group of young men through their final completion of confirmation. We got put kind of on the fast lane. We met twice a week, and uh, I'm so proud of them, and you can be so proud of them as well. Um, Not only have they done the work, I can tell you as a pastor that the faith is alive in their hearts. And so we come to celebrate, to give thanks to God for all his blessings given to us and to them, and also to rejoice in their commitment to follow Jesus the rest of their life. This Sunday happens to be Pentecost Sunday in the church year, the Sunday on which we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit. And how appropriate, for it's the Holy Spirit who brings us to faith and then enables us to live the Christian life. And so the focus of the the service is on the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost and his coming into our hearts and lives today. We begin with the opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful people. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And 
Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to thine infinite mercy, seeking and employing your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us, and he has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake. He forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. How can a young person keep their way pure? I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I have hidden your word in my heart. That I might not sin against you. Praise be to you, O Lord. Teach me your decrees. With my lips I recount. All the laws that come from your mouth. I rejoice in following your statutes. As one rejoices in great riches. I meditate on your precepts. I delight in your decrees. I will not your words. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the The Lord be with you. And also with you. We pray. Lord Jesus, you sent your Holy Spirit upon the disciples on the day of Pentecost. We pray that you would send that same blessing upon us today. We thank you for the transforming work of your Holy Spirit in the lives of our compromands. May they experience your presence in a special way today. And may all of us be renewed in our faith as we worship you in spirit and in truth. In your name we pray. Amen. reading for Pentecost Sunday is from Acts chapter 2 verses 1 through 21. 
It, it's on page uh, 1078. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire and separated and came to the rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't these all here who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, Eliamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontius and Asia, Phygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd, fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what is spoken in the prophet of Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on the people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will turn to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day, day of the Lord, and everyone who calls on that name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapters 15 and 16. Glory to you, o Lord. When the Counselor comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, Jesus says, the Spirit of Truth, who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. I have told you this so that when the time comes, you will remember that I warned you about them. I did not tell you this from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. None of you ask, where are you going? Rather, you are filled with grief because I have said these things. But truly I say to you, it's for your good that I'm going away. Unless I go away, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong because of sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because people do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I go to the Father, where you will see me no longer. And about judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me, because it is from me that you will receive what he has been known to you. And all that belongs to the Father is mine, and that is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. You may be seated. Our confirmands will be sharing their statements of faith, and each of those statements will be preceded by the singing of a verse from the hymn, I Love to Tell the Story.
my confirmation verse is Philippians 4.13. I can do all through Christ who strengthens me. I am a Christian because I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, and everything I do should be for him. When I think of everything Jesus Christ has done for me and for you, it is truly amazing, and I am very, very grateful for everything. To me, a living faith means living for Jesus and only for Jesus. It means staying out of sin and living holy. It is important to me to have a relationship with Christ that makes me a better person. Being a Christian affects my life in a good way because God's commandments are a guide to my life, helping me to be the kind of person he wants me to be. His commandments tell us to be overall nice, kind, and respectful. Being confirmed means to me that I have reached that final step where I am ready to know, now to know what it means to live my life for God. Taking, commu taking communion is also very important. I believe God is the maker of everything. I also believe that Jesus was sent to earth for the forgiveness of sins, giving us eternal life through the Holy Spirit. Because uh, I am a Christian, I know that one day I will go to heaven saved from my sins. Being a Christian has brought me to where I am today. My faith is important to uh, me to keep me connected to God and keep me strong. Being confirmed in my faith means that I am able to take the body and the blood of Christ with my church family. Many members of Good Shepherd have watched me grow up in my faith since I was born. They were at my baptism, watched me sing songs and act in the Christmas programs for Sunday school. They were at the first they were the first to receive the weekly bulletins from me when I was able to help the ushers. After lots of years of going to check on everyone setting up for the passion drama, this year Lauren took us as a confirmation group over to help set up the Journey of Hope at Zion Church in Alexandria. It was uh, fun to be a part of something that has always impacted my Palm Sunday and be able to share it with others. I look at my confirmation as another step up in church towards being an adult. It is a time to reflect on where I have been and where I want to go. My uh, confirmation verse is 1 Thessalonians 5.11. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. This verse helps me in everyday life. When uh, I play baseball, I need it to encourage my team especially the pitcher, to continue to do their best. It is not always easy to stay positive. I need to help my team when they struggle with it. I hope that they will be there for me when I need it. My mom is always telling us at home not to talk mean. She has told us that since we were little, and I still need to work on that all the time. I think... Uh, that uh, by keeping my Bible verse in mind, 
It uh, will help me at home, school, and wherever I am. I am a Christian because I have faith. My faith is in Jesus, God the Father, and the Holy Spirit. I believe that these three are real, and together they are one true God. I believe that God helps me and watches over me and that he will forgive me. Jesus is our Savior and Healer. God the Father is our Maker, and the Holy Spirit is here to help me is here to be our helper. The Bible verse I have chosen as my confirmation verse is Psalm chapter 130, verse 3 and 4. If you, Lord, kept a record of our sins, Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, so that we can, with reverence, serve you. I chose this Bible verse because it shows how God cares for us by not dwelling on what we have done bad, but for giving us for giving us for it. If we, if he kept a record of all of our sins, we would have trouble standing or carrying the weight of them by dwelling on them and not letting go of them. Because of God's forgiveness in Christ, I am able to follow God and serve him. My confirmation verse is Jeremiah 29:11. For I know the plans for you, I ha or for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. <clears throat> I was brought into a Christian home on February 15, 2007. I was brought to church almost every Sunday and was baptized February 17, 2008. Being baptized makes me realize that I have someone to pray to and forgive me of my sins. I believe that God is the creator. I believe that Jesus Christ is our only Lord and Savior who died on the cross for our sins, saving us from eternal damnation. I believe that having a living faith in Jesus will help me become a better person and finish more of my goals in life. It also helps me realize I need forgiveness for my sins, and I can show this by my example. It is important to me to have a stable relationship with Jesus Christ. Having that relationship affects my life and how I act, and it helps me to pray. 
Being confirmed means that I am a member of the church and I am able to receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ. To be confirmed means to continue my faith and relationship with the Lord. I look forward to becoming a confirmed member of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church. There are several pe members of this church that have shown me the values of being Christian. Very good sharing of your faith and your statements of faith. Proud of you and know you're going to keep up the good work. I had the privilege of these last five months uh, reviewing the catechism and an overview of the Bible with these young men to prepare for their confirmation. They had been instructed earlier by other, uh, another pastor, other uh, leaders in the church. I could tell that right away. They knew where it was coming from. What I'd like to do is I'd like to take each one of these Bible verses just briefly and have a comment or two about them because um, as we were preparing for this day, a couple weeks ago, I said, okay, guys, um, I want you to take a look at a Bible verse that might be meaningful to you, and then we'll talk about it. Maybe I can help you choose one. <laughs> Within a couple days, uh, and by the way, we met twice a week, Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings. Each one came up to me and said, well, Pastor, I've got my Bible verse. I found this one or that one, and especially meaningful to me, and that's going to be my verse. <laughs> Does a pastor's heart good to <laughs> hear things like that because a lot of times with confirmation classes, the uh, pastor helps the young person choose a verse, and there's nothing wrong with that. But when they have the wherewithal to find one on their own and say, this is meaningful for, to me because, that means a lot. So Marshall, your verse, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. God does have a plan for your life, for each one of your lives, and that's such an exciting and, and comforting realization. God says, I know the plans I have for you. You're not an accident. You're not um, just one of many. You are a special person to God whom he has chosen for a special path and a special accomplishment in your life. And he knows and he'll guide you as you trust in him. And we know it's going to be the best, because the Bible says all things work together for good to those who love God and are the called according to his purpose. God has a plan for your life. But there is a problem, and that's where your verse comes in, Jace. Because of our sinful, fallen nature, we don't always live up to God's plans. We don't always follow his way. And when we talked about the Ten Commandments, they show us what God expects of us, but they also reveal to us where we have fallen far short. But Jesus' verse, If you, Lord, kept a record of sin, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness. That's the key to the Christian faith, that Jesus came to be our Savior, to take upon himself our sins and shortcomings, failures, nail them to a cross, and there to find forgiveness and everlasting life. And the verse goes on, so that I can serve you with reverence. Forgiveness is not just a get out of jail free card. <laughs> it's rather a life-changing realization that now because of God's love, we can serve him. Because he forgives us, he can inspire us and enable us to follow in his ways. So Jace, your verse shows us in the right direction we are to follow God through the forgiveness of our sins. And Trey, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. With Christ in our life, we have the victory. His suffering and death did away with our alienation from God. His resurrection from the grave gave new life and new hope. And with him living in our hearts, yes, yes, we can do all things through him who gives us strength. What a comfort and a, what an encouragement in life to know that he is with us, that the Christian faith isn't just knowing certain truths and in our heads agreeing to them, but knowing a person, Jesus, and living with him in our hearts as he leads us in our life. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And the Christian faith is not just accepting these truths 
and believing them with all our hearts, which we do. But Thomas's verse reminds us that that's something that's to be shown in our daily life. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. In the Bible, it reminds us that faith without good works is a dead thing. Martin Luther said, we're saved by faith alone, but what true faith is never all by itself. It's never alone, because true faith shows itself in outward action. And Thomas's verse reminds us to encourage one another and to put that faith in action by doing what God has called us to do. So, you four kind of covered the whole spectrum of confirmation, whether you knew it or not, in what your verses say about the true following God in your life. And I know that this is not just a end in itself, but the beginning of following that each and every day. I'd like to cap it off with one of my favorite verses that put it in perspective from Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. Acknowledge him in all your ways and he will direct your path. I know he will. May God bless you. Amen. Let us together confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed as we stand. I believe in God. Confirmands, at your baptism, your parents and sponsors promised to teach you the Word of God, the meaning of the Ten Commandments, the Apostles' Creed, and the Lord's Prayer, and to give you opportunity to study the Bible and the Catechism through the Church. Having done so now, I ask you to make public profession of your faith into which you were baptized. Jesus said, whoever acknowledges me before men I will acknowledge before my Father in heaven, but whoever disowns me before men, I will disown before my Father in heaven. With this in mind, sincerely, sincerely and joyfully confess that faith in the answer to these questions I will ask you. Do you this day in the presence of God and of this congregation acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? If so, say I do. Do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? If so, say I do. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty as maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, as your personal Lord and Savior? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit?
to be your comforter and guide. If so, say, this is my faith. Do you believe that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are the one and only true God, three in one and one in three, the Holy Trinity? Then say, yes, I do believe. Yes, I do. do you hold that the Bible is the inspired word of God and true in all that it says? Then say, I do. I do. And do you confess that the teachings of the Lutheran Church as drawn from the Bible and as you have learned them from the small catechism to be faithful and true? If so, say, I do. And do you intend to conform your life to God's word, to be faithful in worship and attendance at the Lord's Supper, and in faith, word, and deed, to remain true to God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in all your life, then say, I do so intend. I do so. And do you desire to become a member of the Lutheran Church and of Good Shepherd Congregation, then say, I do. Upon this, your public profession, I, as your pres present pastor, announce to you that you have confessed that faith and its truth and purity, that you have studied God's word and know it in your heart, and that you promise to follow Christ as your Savior. I now confirm you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May God bless you, guide you in all your ways, and keep you in this true faith unto life everlasting. Live in his peace. Amen. You may be seated except for a tree. At this time, the, uh, each confirmand will be receiving a confirmation blessing, and parents and baptismal sponsors will join them at the altar. Trey Norman Johnson, your Bible verse, I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Trey the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, give him patience and suffering, and bring him to everlasting life in your kingdom. In the almighty, merciful God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and keep you both now and forevermore. In his name, amen. Trey, may God continue to guide you and bless you in your life as you follow him and as you keep your confirmation vow. He'll go with you and his Holy Spirit will give you his strength. Go in God's peace, God's blessing. Thank you. And blessings to you as parents and sponsors. You've done your job. Thank you. Thomas? Thomas Edward Creamer, your Bible verse, 1 Thessalonians 5.11. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as, in fact, you are doing. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Thomas the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, God his life, empower him in his serving, and give him patience in suffering, and bring him to everlasting life in your kingdom. The almighty, merciful God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and keep you. Live now in his peace. Amen. Thomas, God has blessed you in so many ways and has given you a heart to serve others and your desire to put that into practice as you show forth your faith in helping others and encouraging them. May you continue to do that in your life in the direction God leads you, that you'll be an encourager and a helper in people's lives. God bless you as you do. Live in his peace. And blessings to you as parents and sponsors as you continue to Encourage Thomas in his life, and as you have seen those fruits being brought forth as he has given his life to God. May God bless you as you do. Thomas? Chase?
Jace, Michael, Peltier, your Bible verse, Psalm 130, verses 3 and 4. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Jace the gift of your Holy Spirit. Confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving. Give him patience in suffering, and bring him to everlasting life in your kingdom. The almighty, merciful God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and keep you. Live in his peace. Amen. Jace, God has given you that faith in your heart to be shown in your life. And you continue to follow him as you grow in his word and as you follow his directions and his commandments. God has blessed you in so many ways, and he'll continue to do so as you trust in him and follow in his steps. May God bless you as you do. And parents and grandparents, as mentors in his life, you have been an influence to him and enabling him to come to this point in the confession of his faith. The job doesn't stop here as you continue to encourage, to strengthen, and to be an influence in Jason's life. He's a special young man. You're blessed, and so is he. Marshall James Melvin Swenson. Your Bible verse, Jeremiah 29, verse 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Father in heaven, for Jesus' sake, stir up in Marshall the gift of your Holy Spirit, confirm his faith, guide his life, empower him in his serving, and give him patience and suffering, and bring him to everlasting life in your kingdom. The almighty and merciful God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Bless and keep you now and forever. May you live in his peace. Amen. Marshall, God has given you special gifts. You are a special person. And may God continue to enable you to grow in that faith as you follow his word. God has given you a very wonderful, loving, and supportive family. And that has blessed you and will continue to as you follow your Lord and continue to put your faith into action. And as parents and sponsors, you have done a great job of guiding Marshall in the right path. As we said before, this doesn't stop here, of course, but becomes a launching pad to put the faith that he has received into action in his daily life. So may God bless you as you do, and congratulations. And Marshall, God will continue to guide you as you trust in him. In his name, amen. God bless you. Let us join together in the prayer for the confirmands. O Holy Spirit, you have enlightened the minds of these confirmands with your knowledge of the gospel. O Holy Spirit, you have strengthened the faith of these confirmands through the study of your word. O Holy Spirit, you have gathered these confirmands together in this place. O Holy Spirit, you have called these young men to walk with Jesus throughout their lives. O Holy Spirit, you have led these confirmands forward in their faith. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and grace. It is truly good, right, and proper that we should at all times and in all places 
Give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, because you have mightily governed and protected your holy church, which the blessed apostles and evangelists instructed in your divine and saving truth. Together with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Bless us now in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. This do as oft as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of our Lord be with you always. Body of Christ given for you. Marshall, take and eat. This is the true body of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ given for you. Trey, take and eat. This is the true body.
Savior, Jesus Christ, bless you and keep you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Live now in his peace. Amen. Let us pray together. Almighty God, I bless this day and all the days of our lives until our final day when we shall see you face to face. By your Holy Spirit, enable us to live our lives according to your will, that we may diligently walk in your way, live by your truth, and boldly confess your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. Amen. We remain standing for the closing hymn. seated. What an outstanding group of young men. We look forward to great things in their lives as they follow Jesus and follow him in the fellowship of his church. These four young men will be at the door as you leave this morning from the sanctuary to give them your best and greet them and encourage them in their faith. Also, their statements of faith were and are printed in the bulletin uh, on the day sheet that you received as you came uh, as a keepsake uh, in, uh, in the bulletin to take with you. Go in God's peace. Serve our Lord. Amen.